In a lot of horror movies, innocent people think they're getting a great deal on a new home only to find out that it's haunted. What if something like that happened to you? What do you think these people do when they realise they're actually in a haunted house? Some, if not all, would definitely leave on the next day, but on the other hand, many haunted houses are worth more because of the stories about them. Some have become tourist destinations, while others have become the focus of big Hollywood horror franchises, bringing millions of fans worldwide to their doors. But why do some people actually get frightened with these houses? What kind of experiences do they have? And above all, how did a normal house become a haunted house? Well, without further ado, let's get started. Number 8 at a price of $260,000, Franklin Castle in Cleveland is considered one of the most haunted places in all of Ohio. It has a really long history with ghosts. Atlas Obscura says that Hannes Tiedemann, a grocery store owner who later became a banker, built the Victorian-style home in the 1880s. Many of Tiedemann's close relatives, like his 15-year-old daughter, his mother, his wife, and three of his infant children all died in the house. After Tiedemann died in 1908, it was used for a long time as a centre for German culture and as a home for the German Socialist Party. However, in the 1960s, stories started to spread about strange things happening inside the castle walls. People who have been there said they have felt electrical surges, heard babies crying, and even seen a mysterious woman come out of a cloud of black smoke. According to some people in Cleveland, rumours have spread about horrible things like multiple murders and a mass shooting in the basement that was caused by Nazi politics. Though, of course, many of these claims aren't true. Number 7 the LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans, Louisiana at 1140 Royal Street has six bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and a gruesome past. The palace was constructed in the 1800s initially for visiting French royalty. According to New Orleans Historical, the mansion was reportedly occupied by Madame Delphine LaLaurie in 1832. LaLaurie became known as a member of New Orleans' upper class as a result of the elaborate events that she hosted. However, claims that LaLaurie had mistreated her slaves started to circulate. According to Atlas Obscura, after the mansion caught fire in 1834, firefighters working to put out the flames discovered seven severely maimed slaves who had been imprisoned in the building for quite some time. The residence was then attacked by an enraged mob who destroyed whatever they could. After that, Madame LaLaurie escaped and spent the rest of her days in Paris. Many New Orleans ghost tours still include the mansion because it's believed that the spirits of the slaves who were mistreated inside its walls still roam the property. However, despite the fact it has a horrible history, the home in the French Quarter of New Orleans is still a very desirable place to live. In 2007, actor Nicolas Cage paid $4 million for the house. He later sold it, but in 2009, he bought it again for $2.3 million. Nevertheless, real assessed the property's value at $910,527. Number 6 the Highland Cottage, also called the Squire House, has a strange past. The Swiss-style home was built as a single-family house in 1872. Over the years, it's had multiple owners and is located in Ossining, New York, where the notorious Sing Sing prison is. Regardless, Dr. Amos Osborne Squire, the chief doctor at Sing Sing, bought the house in 1905. It's said that he oversaw around 140 executions while he worked there. Local legend also says that Squire turned the house into a private psychiatric facility around 1912. This gave the house a reputation for being creepy and, of course, haunted. The luxurious and well-built home was once sold for $1.25 million, but in 2018 it was sold for just $925,000. Number 5 in Albion, New York, the Pillars Estate was built in 1878. It contains six bedrooms, six bathrooms, and many original and antique features that make you feel like you're in another time. However, realtors say that people who work in the house have said they've heard footsteps following them up the stairs. Tony McMurtry, the owner, hired Cora Goyette to help him take care of the old house he bought in 2006. Cora says she heard the piano playing in the parlor when no one was actually there. McMurtry himself has also seen ghosts such as a woman in a white dress all around the house. Till today, it's still not confirmed if the house is a new owner, but its price tag is currently over $1 million. Number 4 People still remember 112 Ocean Avenue, where six people were killed in a mass murder. This unfortunately took place on November 13, 1974, when Ronald J. DeFeo Jr., then 23 years old, shot and killed his whole family while they slept. 
a little more than a year after the murder, the Lutz family bought the house for $80,000 less than it was worth because of the bad reputation. However, they only ended up living there for 28 days before moving out, saying that there were strange smells, green slime coming out of the walls and keyholes, and cold spots all over the house. Stepfather George Lutz also said that he woke up every night at 3.15am, around the time that DeFeo killed his family. Even worse, the family said that Kathy, Daniel and Christopher all levitated off their beds which might be the strangest and scariest thing ever. The house was then remodeled and given a new address to keep investigators and horror fans from going there. Surprisingly, in 2010, it was on the market for $1.15 million. I seriously wonder if anyone has since lived in that house. Number 3 the surgeon's house was built by a chief surgeon in 1916, but ever since 1992, many guests claim they've seen ghosts, including a maid, a couple dancing, and the strangest of all, a man carrying a doctor's bag who walks into the master bedroom, changes into pajamas, and then vanishes into thin air. The house is located in Jerome, Arizona with five bedrooms and five bathrooms. The house has a cottage for the chauffeur, living quarters for the maid, and a large garden. It's currently for sale for one point two million dollars. Currently, comparable homes in Jerome sell for half as much as the surgeon's house. Number 2 this Georgian-style mansion was built in 1784 and was fixed up in 1994. It has seven bedrooms, four bathrooms, seven working fireplaces, and original colonial-era woodwork. People say the charming Forge Mansion in Walmersdorf, Pennsylvania is the perfect home for thrill-seekers. There have been several paranormal events that have been reported in the premises. People have claimed they've heard a woman crying in the hallways and also seen a man in the backyard. They've also said they heard noises that sounded like German prisoners of war from the American Revolution. Nevertheless, the mansion was sold in 2009 for $2.5 million and was still waiting for a statement from the new owner as to what he's seen in the house. Number 1 some people think that Bram Stoker's description of Dracula's castle in his 1897 book, Dracula, was based on this castle. It was built in 1211 and finished in 1388. The castle is right on the edge of a huge drop. If a stone fell out the window, for example, it would go a thousand feet before actually hitting anything. As far as the eye can see, there's a sea of green treetops with a deep rift or chasm every now and then. Count Dracula was a fictional character, and there's no proof that Vlad the Impaler the Prince of Wallachia in the 15th century and the real-life inspiration for Dracula ever lived in this fortress. In reality, the castle was first lived in by warriors and knights. It's said, however, that you can still hear the dead souls roam the castle catacombs. In 1920, it was given to the royal family of Habsburg as a gift, and it's now supposedly worth a stunning $66 million. And that's a wrap. Which one of these houses actually frightened you the most, and which among them would you most like to visit and why? Let us know down below in the comments. Also, while you're there, do let us know what videos you'd love to see on the channel in the future, and we'll take your feedback on board. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Remember, this is where we discuss the famous, rich, and powerful. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.